Have you ever planted vegetables in the garden only to find that they had completely wilted over, had spots, had stunted growth, pale green or purple leaves, or even that they had completely disappeared? I know I sure have. So be sure to stick around throughout this entire video because I will be going over each of those common transplanting problems, how to prevent them, and I will be giving you five actionable tips that you can start implementing today to transplant your vegetables successfully. I'm Audrey from Audrey's Little Farm, and around here, it's homesteading made simple. I'm gonna jump right into some of the most common transplanting problems, why they happen, and how you can prevent them. The first common problem is transplant shock. You'll notice that your plants will be wilted, which is caused from stress, possibly they didn't get watered well enough, or you bought poor quality transplants. So to prevent transplant shock, be sure to plant when it's cool outside, water well before and after, and plant good quality plants. Another problem I hear about is the plants completely disappearing. <laughs> Not sure if you ever had that happen, but I'm pretty sure that's a problem when you go out to get your plant and it's gone. So this is typically caused from wildlife and you can prevent that by using a row crop cover. I will link to some below and um, just do that until the seedlings are large enough that if something snips at them, it doesn't totally take away the whole plant. It just takes off a leaf for a stem. The next problem you might run into is plants that have stunted growth. And this is due usually from environmental stress, which could be all sorts of things, such as high wind, extreme temperatures, the soil being too dry or too wet, poor quality plants, poor soil. So if you see stunted growth, there's something going on with the nutrients, either the lack of nutrients, the lack of water, too much water. So you just really have to see what you're doing and try to pinpoint what might be wrong with the plant if you see stunted growth. The next common problem is whitened leaves, and this is caused from frost damage. So after you transplant, if you are planting a crop that's a warm season crop and you happen to have freezing nights below 32 degrees, you it can cause the leaves to get white. And typically, if the plant's healthy, it'll outgrow this as long as there isn't more freezes. The next problem you might see in a plant's appearance would be pale green leaves or purple leaves. The purple leaves indicate a phosphorus deficiency, whereas pale green leaves indicate a lack of nitrogen. The last common problem is spots on leaves, and this is typically caused from either sunburn, over fertilization, or cold water hitting the leaves. So if you're getting cold, rainy, wet weather, you could have, see the spots on the leaves if you have over fertilized, or if they're in the bright sun and they're a young, unhealthy transplant, it's common. And now that you can identify common problems, let's jump into my five best tips for transplanting your vegetables successfully. Tip number one is that you want to plant into a well-prepared garden bed. You wanna have a garden bed that is light and fluffy, like this, free of dirt clods, rocks, and any other debris. I like to use a rototiller for working at my garden beds, especially if it rains. Right after a nice rain, the soil is nice and soft and it's easy to work up. But if you don't get that lucky, just Use a sprinkler and moisten down your beds for a little while and then work them up until they're nice and fluffy. And then if you need to add any compost in, this is the perfect time to do it as well. Tip number two is handle your transplants with the correct care. Plants that don't like to have the roots disturbed, such as corn, peas and beans, and cucurbits, which would include your melons, cucumbers, and squashes, should be handled carefully with minimal root disturbance. If you happen to have two of these plants growing in the same cell, like these cucumbers here, do not separate them. Just plant them both together, and then once they get more established, use scissors and snip off one of the plants so the other one can grow and fully establish. Your other transplants that don't mind root disturbance, such as your tomatoes and peppers and broccoli, if you have multiple ones growing in one cell, you can gently separate those at the roots and plant them in different locations, and it won't cause any harm. And for a list of all the vegetables that can and can't tolerate root disturbance, be sure to get my free guide below because I list all of that out. My third tip is to transplant during a cool and overcast day. Of course, I know this is not always possible, but if you're approaching a planting date, just check on the forecast and see if there happens to be an overcast, cooler day in the forecast. Even if it happens to be drizzling rain, that's the perfect condition for transplanting and it will help minimize transplant shock. But if all the days appear to be sunny and warm, just plant early in the morning while it's still cool outside. And be sure to plant your vegetables in damp soil. And that leads me into my fourth tip, which is making sure you water the soil well before and after transplanting. You don't want to just quickly 
miss the top of the soil, you want to water deeply and slowly. But you also don't want a sopping wet soil. You should be able to stick your finger in the soil and feel moisture a few inches deep, but it shouldn't be wet and muddy. And then as soon as you transplant your vegetables, be sure to water them in again because you don't want the roots drying out in between. You want them to be planted in moist soil and then immediately get watered again. Another thing to be sure of is that your garden beds have well draining soil. This means that the water doesn't drain out so fast that the plants don't have time to absorb the moisture, but also that the water doesn't sit in the bed too long to where the roots are constantly in wet, soggy soil. If roots are in wet, soggy soil for too long, it prevents them from absorbing the nutrients that they need. And now on to my fifth tip, which is using a starter fertilizer. I like to use a fertilizer called Sure Start, and it's a natural organic blend of materials, specially formulated for strong roots and sturdy growth. And it's super easy. All you have to do is sprinkle a quarter to a half a teaspoon in each hole prior to transplanting your transplant. So now that we have made it through our last tip, here is your action plan. First, make sure the vegetables that you want to transplant are on the list of vegetables that can be transplanted. If not, plant those by seed. Second, look up your first transplant date so that you're ready to plant on time. Next, prepare your garden bed. Fourth, look at the weather to see if there's an overcast day in the future. If not, just plant in the morning when it's cool and in moist soil. Fifth, make sure to use a starter fertilizer such as Sure Start. Plant your transplants and water them in deeply. Now be sure to get your free transplanting guide below and I will see you next time.